your boy Malik back with another video for y'all today and and today we got the Ford Edge ST not the Focus ST not the Explorer ST not a Fiesta ST this is the Ford Edge ST and let me just tell you let me tell y'all what this thing is right here so you know how you're torn between wanting performance and being able to haul your family around. But hauling your family around, you get bad gas mileage. But if you want something that's got good gas mileage, you're probably gonna have to go for some minivan. You don't want a sedan, but you don't want a full size SUV, but you still want performance and you still want that kick when you put your foot on the accelerator. Well, let me just tell you, this is the Ford Edge Sport Technologies and I'm gonna sit here and I'm gonna tell you all about this thing right here. It is in a aggressive black color. I'm talking about that's that, that that's black on black right there. I mean, good lord, the Ford Edge ST. Look, this is what you buy when you're torn between wanting an Escape and a Fusion, a sedan, a crossover, a performance car, and being able to haul your family around. This is what you buy when you don't want to be ordinary this is what you buy when you want to be different than the rest this is what you buy when you still want to be able to drive off road and then smoke a dodge challenger on the highway you know what i'm saying this is what you buy when you want to smoke a dodge challenger with five people in the car and luggage in the back and a sunroof and a moonroof and being able to go off road. <laughs> I mean, this is what you buy when you're also doing all of that with a trailer behind you because this thing has the tow package on it. All right, so if you've ever wondered, well, in order for me to get a tow package, I gotta get something like an Explorer and Expedition. No, you, you, yeah. you can get you a dang uh, Ford Edge with a tow package on it. So what does it mean when Ford attaches their lovely ST or RS badge to it. Well, that means you are a part of Ford special vehicle team. All right, so anytime you buy a Ford vehicle with ST on it, that absolutely means exactly what I'm about to tell you, which is on this window sticker that says, you get to be a part of the ST Octane Academy or the ST SUV experience. Same thing like the Explorer ST. It's a one day driving experience. You get to bring a guest, you get to sit in the hotel, you get a breakfast, a lunch, a dinner, and you get to just act a hoodlum all while still getting 21 miles to the gallon out of a vehicle with a 2.7 liter twin turbocharged V6 and all wheel drive, all right? Let me let you know what that all wheel drive means. That means that whichever one of these wheels is not grabbing, Okay, let's say that one's not grabbing, and that one is. It sends all that power to that wheel, and the rest of them freely roll just a little bit until traction is regained, and then it goes back to its normal drivetrain mode. So it's almost like on-demand all-wheel drive, if that makes sense. Now, let me let you know something. Ford HST is not slow. I mean, you see the bigger brakes. This one has the appearance package on it which means you get the black wheels. You get two wheel options with the Edge ST. You can either get a kind of like a silver black rim and tire, or you can get these, which these right here are, let me see, these are 265, 21s, boys. These are 20, and look, God dang, look at those brakes on that thing. Yeah, you, you got stopping power. You got stopping power. Now, let's talk about these lights. Don't even get me started on those grill shutters. You know they're back there. You know there's a camera right there and the collision mitigation sensor right there. And then you got the parking sensors and all that good stuff so you don't bump into anything while you're parking. All right, this lovely little strip right here, that's what we call an angry eyebrow daytime running light. And it actually matches all the way down and it runs into your fog light right here. So that means is, when you're driving down the road in daytime and everybody else has got those ugly, whitish, yellowish headlights, you get these pretty blue daytime running lights and these pretty blue headlights and these pretty bluish high beams and those pretty blue fog lights and that pretty amber turn signal. So everything on this is LED. 
Then you also get an LED timer signal on the mirror. God, I mean, you got LED lights across the back. So this is LED. And the thing about this Edge ST is normally the Edge has a light that goes all the way across. And that almost hints towards Lincoln's design, but they're actually done away with that for this model year and the Edge ST. Now, if I just accidentally just, bam. I just might open my lift gate. So, what that means back here, we got all, I mean, look. Look at all this space back here. Do you see this? Hold on, let, let me do my test that I did in the Explorer ST video, and I'm just gonna show you how much space you have back here. So if you feel like you need to get an Explorer or get something bigger because the edge isn't big enough to carry all your space, well, there's two features that Fords have on their vehicles that will allow you to go with a Ford rather than the competition. The first thing is this. I am probably about six foot tall. So yeah, that, I mean, I could have fit probably two more of me in that thing. Oh, and that's without folding the seats down. Realistically, I can open it with my foot or push this button right here. All right. So then you open the trunk or the lift gate and you see all this space back here and your full size spare tire back there and your funnel and all that good old stuff and your speaker and your extra um compartments to hold stuff and then you've got a another charging port back here and then you got these two buttons right here that oh wow oh oh we got one more left oh oh let me hit this right button right here what what look at all that space back there you cannot tell me that that is not enough space now it's not a completely flat you know, it's not as flat as the Explorer, but my God, look at all that space back there. So then we close that trunk. Now let's talk about the exhaust. Now these do look good, but they do actually have a pipe that goes back there. And then if you look and see how much ground clearance you have, you know, you got your tow hitch and your chain link hookups and all that stuff back there. You know, you can put your towing stuff back there and you can tow what you need to tow. You got a rear windshield wiper back here, and then you also get that wiper washer for the camera. So this little nozzle right there actually washes that camera off. So anytime you activate your windshield wiper washers, it will actually wash the camera in the back and the front and the wiper and the rear wiper and all that good stuff. So this little camera right here in the front, that's what's gonna give you that 360 degree uh, view around the vehicle when you're parking. So it can also wash itself too. Um, I mean, this thing looks freaking sinister. I mean, even when it's not clean, it still looks sinister. I will tell you on the edge though, you do get the wipers that go this way and out that way. So this one comes that way, that one goes that way because it actually will get the entire windshield instead of leaving that lovely little mountain right there in the center and not getting leaving a big crest on the passenger side window so that's one thing I actually do like and they do move pretty quick and then you also get a light right there so that light kind of helps you get in at night when you are driving at night now we do get the smart key access system on this too so you get the edge ST key you get the remote start yes you get the remote start you can activate that lift gate through here and let's see if we can do this I don't know if it'll do it while it's on. Might not do it while it's on, but I'm gonna turn it off. Let's see if we get the global windows on here too. Oh, 
Yep, we get the global windows and that's for the front only it looks like. Vehicle, you don't actually have to have the key in your hand because you get the smart key access. So that's the lock. That's how you unlock it right there. And of course, we still get that gloss black key code right there that we're starting to see on just about every Ford vehicle. Now look inside this thing. This is like steel. Greeted with that Ford Performance. You still see the Ford Performance right there. And of course, you get the satisfaction and ASMR type um, satisfaction of peeling that right on off when you first buy it. And then peeling that right on off when you first buy it. I mean, just Jesus. Now, you've got your compartment right there that'll actually hide some of the wires that we don't want to see. So, that actually leaves better access instead of having to take off the entire dashboard just to get to something. You know what I'm saying? Inside the Edge ST, we still get the B&O sound system, the gloss black, you get the stitching on the door and all that good stuff. I'm going to get in here. Now, I will say this. This, to be honest, I'm going to be 100% honest, feels like a bigger, faster Fusion Sport. <laughs> I mean, literally, you get the same exact steering wheel design as the Fusion. But you get that lovely ST badge that we're starting to see on the Explorer ST and Edge ST and all that good stuff. Now, previously, this was called the Edge Sport, but they've actually upped the horsepower and torque to 350 horsepower and 380 pound feet of torque my guys ladies and gentlemen i'm not going to sit up here and tell you what that does in a vehicle like this that's all wheel drive but the torque delay and the takeoff delay and the passing power is very minute the passing power though is i mean most people are used to ford edges being slow you know SUVs being slow. Those days are over with. I'm going to go ahead and start this thing because I'm hot. So to put your foot on the brake and hit that button to start right there. See how that steering wheel is starting to drop down and I'm slowly inching forward. So, yes. When you turn off the vehicle, it will pull your seat back so you can get in and out. A lot of these controls are pretty much the exact same. So I'm not going to go too much in detail. I want to talk really more about the idea behind the Edge ST. I mean, you still got your navigation, your audio, your please say a command. Please say a command. Set temperature to 67. Did you say 67 degrees? Yes. Setting temperature to 67 degrees. I mean, you still get stuff like that. You still get your built-in Wi-Fi, your phone, your Apple CarPlay, Sirius XM, all that good stuff. So I'm not gonna go too much in detail, but however, your wireless charger in this sits right in there. So if you have an iPhone, you're gonna want your home button or your home slide up to be on this end to charge the phone. Two charging ports right there, cup holders, extra compartments, auto start stop. And actually I'm gonna make a video on how to disable that because a lot of people do not like that. And I am one of those people because I have a Fusion that has that. And let me tell you, when the engine cuts off, the AC cuts off, okay? Please understand that. And you get that soggy, wet sock smell coming to the vents because the compressor is no longer turning. So therefore, the condensation on the evaporator cool is now coming through the vents instead of dehumidifying and dripping outside. And your windows will fog up in the wintertime if you have the defrost on and that engine shuts off. So yes, please understand that. We do get heated and cooled passenger and driver seats. That's another thing to know. Rear defrost, defrost, all that good stuff right there. So, I mean, it's pretty much the same layout. I mean, all everything right here is the same as it is in just about every other Ford vehicle. But this one does have the adaptive cruise control. So you turn that on and you can widen that gap or shorten that gap, just depending on how far you want to stay. And that's all thanks to what's hidden behind this right here. Your, uh, advanced driver assistance system that's actually what that's called now we do get that twin panel moon roof you know what i'm saying and it actually is tilted up right now just to let a little fresh air in here i mean you get that lovely st stitching on the seats not too loud but to remind you that when you get in this vehicle this is not your regular edge in fact it's on the edge of driving performance 
like that joke I just threw in right there. I, I knew you'd like it. That's why I said it. Um, you get the ambient lighting, so you get all that good stuff in here. But Jesus, I mean, dude, I would love to be sitting in one of these right now. And if you want to, if you want to, I mean, if you just absolutely want to, you can go in and go on down to driver assist. And where is it at? It should say something like traction control. Or well, it doesn't say it right there, but it actually will say it right here. Electronic stability control right there. Traction control off, which it's kind of hard to lose traction in an all-wheel drive vehicle. But, hey, if it floats your boat, it makes mine go faster. Push it again. Uh-oh. Now, if you, push, uh, if you turn it back on and if you push it twice, you have just turned advanced track off. So now you are completely on your own. You push it again, and that turns it back on. Now, I think there's a way to go into advanced track sport mode. Let me see. Oh, if you hold for advanced track off. Yes, you can either hold it for advanced track off or press it twice real fast, and then you just turn it back on. That button right there will activate your lift gate from the inside. Oh, you can stop it. And then close it right back. So yes, I love that feature right there and I love that little chime it has. We still get that dial shifter and the electronic parking brake. So let's hear what it sounds like. Most people aren't used to that. Most people are used to pulling a handle or stomping their left foot down and not reaching for a clutch. So that's what it's gonna sound like when you enable that. Uh, parking brake. Now let's talk about the powerhouse of this thing and then we're going to get into the real reason why you're going to want to buy something like this. Because like I said, everything right here is the same layout in the Fusion, the Expedition, and just about every other Ford vehicle that has the sync, the updated sync system, the sync 3. So let's go under the powerhouse of what makes the Edge ST, the Edge ST. So I'm going to reach my foot down, make sure this thing's in park. The key has left the vehicle, so let's look and see what's up under this key. Supported by the shocks right here, this is the Ford Performance 2.7 liter twin turbocharged V6. Okay, anytime you got a Ford vehicle and you see two of these coming off the intake box, that means two turbochargers, all right? That's exactly what that means. So, now I can't really see the turbos, but I know they're down there because I can kind of hear them just a little bit. This right here is kind of going to be for your auto start stop, and then there's your battery right there. Now, I'm not going to do it on this vehicle because this is not mine. I'm going to do it on my Fusion and make a video on how to show you how to actually disable the auto start stop. But, yeah, 350 horse, and it's just quiet. It's just, I mean, it, it's like, it's, it's, it's still an SUV, you know what I'm saying? But it's quiet. It's not like a, you know what I'm saying? It's just quiet until you unleash it. It's quiet until you give it the juice. It's quiet until you give it the beans. It's quiet until you put your foot on the accelerator. All right? You put your foot on the accelerator, you're going to hear this thing scream. And it sounds good. It's not like an ugly scream. It's a good scream. Now, this is made, like I said, to an all-wheel drive system. All right? And I do recommend that you put... 93 octane in this minimum minimum 91 but i do recommend 93 if you can get a hold of 93 please put 93 inside this thing all right now let's get in the back and let's see just about how much space i mean like i said it's still an suv so i kind of have to cover everything on you know where everybody else is going to be sitting and how they're going to be sitting now as far as the driver though you've got a three memory driver seat so if three people are driving your car they can all memory set their seat to their liking and just press that button. Now, if you get this vehicle and the seats are folded down, you just fold them right back up and get on in the back. And I'm sitting behind myself right now. It is, let me tell you, it's pretty comfortable back here. You got your old crap handle, all right? You got your reading light up top and all that stuff. And you in the back can look up here and see on out the window. I meant the, uh, you can look out the panoramic moonroof, but if it's cold back here, you got heated seats. All right, you got heated seats in the rear. 
You got two setting high and low heated seats back here. You've got a 12 volt power outlet. You've got your 110 volt regular AC voltage outlet back here. And then this is for about three people can sit back here and have an armrest and all that good stuff and cup holders and everything. And you still get your stitching on the seats. And it's kind of, you still get that same pattern like you do in the front. So I love when manufacturers actually match the patterns on the front seats and the back. Sometimes that's where manufacturers will cheap out at. Ford is not one of those manufacturers. So big props to Ford right there. And then you've got all this ample space back here to put your groceries and your luggage and all the stuff that you're towing to the beach while you're smoking every other SUV on the road with a fully loaded SUV and stuff in the back. So, I mean, it, dude, it's pretty comfortable back here. I'm not even going to lie to you. I mean, the seat, let me talk to you. The seat, it's a good seating position. My legs aren't sitting down and they're not sitting up. And if I want to, I mean, I got all this space I can kick my feet up under and more of my leg is supported by the seat rather than my leg being supported by my leg. I know that sounds confusing, but sometimes the bench seat is not enough support. So if you're on long trips, your butt gets numb. But even if it is, these seats are comfortable. I mean, they're magnificent. They are proportionally comfortable. Like, I like these seats back here, man, for real. Like, and then you get this gloss piano type trim on the door and you still got your B&O speakers back here. And I mean, you've actually got a speaker behind you too. So if you can see that, that's a speaker. And then uh, that's a speaker also as well. So a little cup holder right there. Same thing for the other side, you get another cup holder. So you got a total of how many cup holders? That's four cup holders back here. Jesus. All right, so I'm back in the front of the, this is where you wanna be in the edge ST. You don't wanna be on the edge of the back seat. gonna put my foot on the accelerator right quick just just turn this off just, 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 just. see even when you rev it it's still quiet and see that's where people will mistake you that is where people will take you for granted that is where people will think oh it's just a v6 let me tell you something Ford puts their power to the ground not in decibels. You see what I'm saying? Now, if they want to make it about decibels, they can. But if they want to make it about power and functionality and efficiency, this is what you get. One thing I do want to note too, you cannot open the trunk or the lift gate, whether you use the key, whether you kick your foot under there, or whether you use this button. You cannot open this lift gate if the vehicle is not in park. So, now you can open the lift gate. So exactly how does the Edge ST drive? The Edge ST is one of those vehicles, and I'm getting hot because I don't have the AC on. Why I don't have the AC on, I have no idea. But the Edge ST is one of those vehicles where you don't see it very much, but when you see it, you know what it is.
60, bro, and you didn't even hear it. Like, what? Let me tilt this back. So, dude, the Edge ST, I haven't even got the thing in sport mode yet. I'm just, hold on, let's see if it'll, let's see if it'll go, oh, it's really assisting me, too. I feel it. It didn't, it's not assisting as much as the Explorer did. I will say that. It is not assisting as much as the Explorer did, but, buddy, let me tell you. Oh, it's got paddle shifters. I didn't even see that. We're in sixth gear. Fifth. Fourth. It won't let me go no lower than fourth. There we go. All right. Now, I'm going to tilt the, 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 uh, some, the, yeah, I'm going to tilt that up a little bit so you can hear. All right. The auto start stop is off. So I'm gonna hit this left turn right quick. And there goes a cop, he's undercover, very much undercover. But we wanna watch out. There goes an Explorer. So I'm gonna pull out. You wanna know what this thing sounds like? You're about to get it. Oh! <laughs> I could actually tell that that was that piped in audio. Let's put it in sport mode. Oh my gosh. We're in sport mode right now. We're in fourth gear. Whoa. As this thing drives, um, I mean, it like seamlessly just pulls. Like pulls. Turn right down Talladega National Forest. All right. All right, let's see what this thing will do. straighten the wheel up a little bit okay all right we're gonna turn left no we're gonna go right left let's see which way should we go um that's a dead end that way so we'll turn right giddy up horsey oh my god oh my god oh, 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 that nose went up holy god Holy God. And we're going up a hill right now. We're going up a hill right now. Oh my God. Ford, what do y'all got going on? What, what provoked y'all to make something like this? What provoked y'all to say, hey, let's make a family SUV that goes as fast as a Mustang and handles like a Mustang. And it's just taking these curves. And I have not drifted out my lane not once. That's that lane keeping system. Handling it. Handling it. Handling it, guys. You wait till I get on the straightaway. Like, Jesus. Oh, my gosh. It can't even see as you're turning. <laughs> I love it. Scenic overlook. All right, here we go. Here we go. Shifting in the third gear. What you really want to know though is how does this thing go zero to 60? Okay. All right, first I'm gonna give you my impression, then I'm gonna let you see it. Ready? What is going on with y'all? Ford, I love it. I love it, Ford. And you can just feel that torque just, you know what I'm saying? 
It is amazing. I gotta get some shots of this thing at the scenic overlook. And then we'll head back to the Ford dealership, but I'm just having too much fun. Y'all, somebody needs to come buy this because Buster Miles has got a dead gum good price on this thing. Let me tell you, if I had the money in my bank account, I would have left with it today. Hello, today is the perfect day to buy a car. It's four o'clock, they don't close till, I think six or 5.30. Let's, let's go to the scenic overlook right quick. Let's let's look at this thing. My gosh. Jesus. Wow. Wow. I'm gonna try to get it with its daytime morning lights on too. Stay in and the crazy thing is to do that you have to have it either in drive, reverse, or neutral for the daytime running lights to be active. Most definitely. Most definitely. You can't tell me this thing isn't just gorgeous. Hey, he's having fun back there. But I hate to tell you, this thing's probably faster than that, and I'm not even joking. Like, and you can hear it, it's got a small rumble to it. Like, let's go back here and listen to it. It's got a small rumble at the exhaust. Listen, you can hear it just a little bit. This thing's gorgeous. Oh. That was a little bit, that was more fun than it should have been. But, uh. That was 60 right there. Didn't even change gears twice. Hello. And you've got six gear. Wait, I think this thing's got eight. Oh, Lord. But it's got 160 on the dash. Let me tell you something. If a turbo four cylinder Mustang will do 160 tuned, what do you think this will do? What do you think that this will do? Oh, here goes another scenic overlook. Mm. Let's go to this one. I like the way this one looks better. This is more like a roundabout. At the roundabout, take the first exit. On the right. Oh, there goes a crow. Matter of fact, I'm on a... Hold on, this thing's got the 360 camera on it too. Let's look at the front. Oh! And the side. Wow. Great. That's beautiful. Turn right. I don't need to drive in sport mode. I'd rather drive in normal mode. This thing's got enough, more than enough power and torque. And the steering wheel is definitely vibrating. And like this one can actually see around corners. I mean, literally. To let you know that you are drifting out of your lane. And this thing will make a turn on a dime, too. Good Lord. Even making three-point turns. Even in a vehicle this big, it's still a three-point turn. Like, it's not a five-point turn. All right, let's get some realistic gas mileage numbers right quick. All right. We don't have far to go. Um, reset the computer right quick. Spirited driving, you're going to get the gas mileage you asked for. I'm just going to put it out there like that. But you drive it normally and you can get some pretty decent numbers. Am I going the right way? Yes, I am. Keep your foot out of the accelerator just a little bit. Turn that cruise control on. You know, you can get some pretty decent numbers. I mean, right now it's just a calm, you know, 55, 60 miles an hour. 
mileage is constantly going up. 13. Now we're at 12. Once you restart it, you start at zero. You don't start out at 100 or anything. So that's one thing to, to note. You know, you, to get realistic numbers, you got to let the computer average itself out. Let your driving habits average in, itself out. And then, like right now, we're already upwards almost to 20 miles to the gallon, 55, 60 miles an hour. You can get some pretty good gas mileage in this thing. Now, 93 octane is what's going to give you the best fuel economy, the best performance, the best range on a tank of gas. So, but every time you dig your foot in the accelerator, just know your range drops, your gas mileage drops, and of course, you do lower the life of the engine also as well. I'm gonna just tell you right now, this one right here at Buster Miles Ford, I don't know if you're gonna find a better deal on one because, I mean, it's been sitting there for a while. So, when you go by there, you need to talk to Miss Juliana Gaines, let her see what she can do for you, or talk to somebody at Buster Miles. Because right now, we're at 25. That's the type of gas mods I get out of my Fusion. Okay? My Ford Fusion. I get 25, 26 miles to the gallon out of a Ford Fusion with a one and a half liter turbo four cylinder. This is a 2.7 liter twin turbocharged six cylinder. And we are at 27 miles to the gallon. 60 miles an hour. I'm gonna decrease the 55 just to see what it would do. I got a little wind noise coming from the, cause I got it tilted up. So you can kind of hear the engine. And even when you hear it, it's not an annoying noise. But you do have to understand a lot of these Ford EcoBoost vehicles do have that uh, sound enhancement that pipes from under the hood through the speakers. So it may sound just a little bit different on the outside than it does on the inside, but we're reaching towards 27 miles to the gallon right now, and that's going around curves and uphills. We're at 26.9, 27. I'm just gonna tell you, you dig your foot in the accelerator, it's gonna drop though. So, but on the interstate, that's where your gas mileage is really gonna shine. They give you a rating on that sticker, but that sticker is just almost like a worst case scenario. So that when you get it, you're actually surprised a little bit. We're gonna turn right on Almond Street. And I'm gonna go park this thing right back where it belongs until somebody comes and picks it up. We gotta do one last. Like it doesn't have to drop gears to pull. It does not have to drop gears to pull at all. It surprises me for a vehicle this big. Like most vehicles, this was in second gear. It may have been in third, but just the amount of torque this vehicle has. Horsepower and torque, they go hand in hand. But um, it's crazy though, dude. This thing is. Oh, you want to help me drive? You want to help me drive? Let me get in the lane. Let me get in the left left lane so you can actually see both lines. Okay. You want to help me drive? Go ahead. Go ahead. See, you're going the wrong way. You're going the wrong way. Stay in the line. Stay in the line. That's why you have to keep your hands on the wheel. But it's really. <laughs> Let's see if it'll make this turn. It got out of the line and it said vehicle is slowing down. If you don't get your hand on the wheel, it will slow down and deactivate your cruise control. Please understand that. All right, we're gonna go back to the Ford dealership right quick. And we are going to park this vehicle right back where it belongs. tell you this thing's pretty quick i mean to be honest this actually weighs less than the explorer st so if you're kind of torn between an edge st and the explorer st i'll go ahead and say it you know what i want to try something i want to try something let me see if it'll work I'm gonna try the perpendicular parking aid right quick. So as soon as this guy kind of walks out of the way, 
and I tapped that one to perpendicularly part, not parallel part. Let's see if it'll do it. Release steering wheel shit. <laughs> Am I supposed to put my foot on the accelerator? <laughs> I guess so. Oh my God. Am I, are you gonna do it or do I need to intervene? Is this, is this where this thing was at? You know what, let me... This is where I'm gonna put it, right here. Yeah. So that is the Ford Edge ST for y'all. Let me just tell you, this thing right here actually attempted to park itself. I did intervene, but I did, um, I did wanna show that to you. Now, the Ford Edge ST, guys, let me tell you, this is a vehicle that you would definitely want to consider over a traditional Edge because you get so much more power and torque. I mean, because that's really what you are buying this thing for is the horsepower and the torque. I mean, you can go for a regular four-cylinder, but then you get something like this, it's all-wheel drive, and you just take off off the line. And let me tell you, there is a myriad of tunes out here that you can run on the Edge ST to gain over 100 horsepower and over 100 pound-feet of torque with just a tune or at least 80 horsepower. I'll say that much. This has been Maliko Boost down here at Buster Miles Ford just on my free day doing a little car video for you. Don't get bit by that thing now. Let me tell you, this thing right here is a monster. Like, it is a monster. But... We're gonna put this monster back in its space until somebody gives this monster a home. Let's put it right back. All right, we're good. Engage parking brake. Again, I have engaged the parking brake. So whoever moves this thing, the brake.